Good morning, friends. My name is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church, and I was trying really hard to get to a place that wasn't my junk room. <laughs> uh, so thank you for your patience, and let's uh, make sure we're all turned up here. Hey, Carolyn, it's good to see you. Um, wow, the snow is so pretty here. I pray that you are dry and warm. Hey, Shirley. Um, thank you for being patient this morning. Uh, it was not snowing at six o'clock when we got ourselves going around here. And so uh, my husband and I were out. Hey, good. Hey, how are you, Amy? There's Edna and Janet, all you good folks. I hope that you're safe and warm. Um, it is just amazing watching the snow come down. So Oh, so sorry. I was going to try to do something that was much more daring, but um, so here we are. Here we are. Um, beautiful day. And this is a day that holds a couple of different um, anniversaries or recognitions, uh, if you will. Look at all you people popping in here. Good morning, Bobby. Hey, Joyce. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of folks are going to be watching the news uh, today, especially since we're uh, inside and staying safe and warm um, about what happened a year ago. Um, but I also want to lift up for us today, too. Today is the day of Epiphany. Uh, we celebrated it here in the Cook's Church this past Sunday, Epiphany Sunday, the manifestation of or the revelation of God. Um, and so, good morning, Carol. Um, and so, um, I want to, I, I, as you watch out your window today, as you look at um, this magnificent and beautiful snow, I, I hope that you will be as mindful, if not more so, of God's intent to reveal the divine to us. Uh, and that's also why I've chosen today for us to look at day five, the reading from yesterday uh, that uh, has to do with the beginning of Job. Some of you may be surprised as we are reading chronologically this year that Job comes as early as it does chronologically. Um, and um, so... Uh, we're going to be spending a lot of the next few days um, in Job and along with some Psalms and things like that. Hey, Herman, how are you today? Um, and so I want us to look at um, this uh, amazing thing. Now, if you're just now joining us after the first of the year or if you're, we're new to you, period, um, there... Uh, sometimes we're not going to be reading scripture directly like we have before lifting up one or two verses. We're taking a chunk of it. want to remind you that they're uh, a good way to look at this type of study or reading is to think about um, um, these, uh, these ideas when you come to a passage. Is there something in this passage that catches my attention, a particular verse, a particular phrase, a particular person, a particular response, or um, spoken word, uh, if there's a conversation there? Um, and observe that. What, what's your gut tell you? What's your first observation of that? Um, and then how would you apply that truth or that lesson to your life? then offer a prayer to God in that particular direction and then discover or decide what it is that you might need to yield in your life in order for that new truth or that new discovery uh, to really take root in you. Herman, I bet you do feel like Job sometimes. Um, and this could be about you, brother. Um, so here, um, first of all, a couple things that I would tell you as I read through this first um, interaction with Job. We've got one, uh, chapters 1, 2, and a good portion of 3 that are in this first reading. We're not going to get very far at all because we're not going to be afraid of recognizing what's happening here, which makes us ask some questions about God. 
and about our relationship with God. So, a couple of things. Satan is known as the accuser. Uh, let that stick with you. Remember how we talked at the very beginning, um, uh, at the very beginning of our chronological study, how the enemy tips his hand at how he's going to come at us. There are all kinds of accusations he throws against God, but also against Adam and Eve and pits them against one another. Well, he's going to do the same thing here with Job. Uh, and it begins not with a conversation with Job or an action against or to Job. This all begins with a conversation between God and Satan. So this is the Sandra translation. I just want to condense it a bit for us. The conversation uh, when um, the beings of heaven are gathered. Um, uh, the translation from the New Living Translation says, one day the angels came to present themselves. I know the New Revised Standard Version says the heavenly beings were presenting themselves to God and Satan was there too. Satan was a part of that group. So here's the conversation. God says, where you been? Or what, what you been doing? And Satan's response is to and fro, up and down. Basically, I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. Yep, I've been everywhere. And here is the curious question. Have you considered my servant Job? It's almost as if God knows, because we know the story now. It's almost as if God knows what Satan's going to be up against. This must be um, after the fall of Satan, maybe. Uh, because this is in the nature of the enemy to... Uh, accuse and to find someone to stir up to rob God of the relationship, to rob that person of the relationship with their creator? Have you considered my servant Job? And then he very quickly names four reasons why he loves Job so much. Well, he loves Job anyway, but these are characteristics truths about Job that really hit God at the heart. If we could say it that way, he's blameless. It means he has no sin. He's upright. He's righteous in the way he does. He makes decisions, interacts with his family, um, the way he is with his friends. So he's blameless. He's righteous. He fears God. Remember, fear means uh, respect, honor, uh, revere, uh, deem as holy. We might even get kind of towards, you know, a promised submission to. We allow that person to have authority uh, for us, over us. And he turns away from evil. He doesn't just take it or put himself in spiritual harm's way. Job makes a decision to scoot. And then the enemy, Satan, actually says to God, does Job fear God for nothing? He reveres him for nothing. Does he respect him for nothing? It's all good while things are good. And God, this is the troubling part. I mean, the whole conversation should be troubling for us. But here's the real troubling part. God basically says, then do what you want with Job. Just don't kill him. Don't, don't hurt him physically. Uh, don't do him in physically. And then we know the rest of the story. He loses his crops. He loses his livestock. He loses his family. Um, uh, his children are all crushed, literally crushed and killed. One thing after another, the onslaught comes. Now, I know that you have had those moments where you feel like the waves just keep crashing and not in a good way. I, I, I know you've had that time in your life. You may be living in it right now. 
And so we have to be courageous enough to think about why God would have this kind of conversation. What does this tell us about our God that God would have a conversation with Satan this way? Uh, what does it tell us about um, us that God would allow this to happen? Well, let me just make a couple of assertions here and let's get ourselves thinking about this. We know how God thinks about Job, not just because he names those four characteristics, how he knows Job best, uh, blameless, righteous, uh, fears God, respects him, submits to him, and also turns from evil. But it's even before that, have you considered my servant, Job? God loves this man. That's why it's troubling for us. Why would God allow such devastation to happen in one person's life? Maybe, my friends, it is because God designed us and God has already made a way, even in our fallenness, for us to have the kind of connection and life together that is eternal before the end of this age. Maybe, though we chose to partner with evil first through the gate of selfishness and arrogance, Eve, Adam, Maybe God allows still evil and its consequences to be close to us, to impact us, because God already knows the greater truth that maybe we haven't learned or that we don't trust in yet. He did not allow Satan to physically, to physiologically rob Job of his life. It would be Job's responsibility to give that up. And I don't mean now just his physical life, breathing, his brain working. I mean God was trusting that Job would understand, though I grieve and though I am broken emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, even when he has boils and other physiological issues, he still has the breath of God in his lungs, and he trusted that Job would, even in his lack of understanding, trust God, his creator, his companion, his redeemer. My husband uses this language, is that we often talk about God testing us. So the things that came against Job were a test of how much Job loved God. What if those were all opportunities, as dire as they were, that they were all opportunities for us to proof ourselves, not prove ourselves, but for us to be proofed and what I mean is we get to discover how strong we are by God's strength, how wise we are by God's wisdom, how tenacious we are by God's spirit. For I gave you a spirit of power, love, self-discipline, not one of timidity or fear. Um, sorry about that. God has created us for relationship with God and nothing can come against that unless we allow it. God already knew what was possible with Job. And as horrible, as difficult, as challenging as it is for us to think that God would allow evil to touch us, that God would allow difficulty to trip us up, we're the ones who get to decide if we will allow God's wisdom, strength, love for us, covenant promise, to guide us and lead us through whatever it is we face, 
we get to decide that just like Job did. What we're going to discover in these next few days, too, is that his friends were chock full of so many cockamamie explanations and um, uh, words of wisdom, wink, wink, and advice because they all assumed he'd ticked God off, and that's why God was doing this to him. All God did is take his hands off for a minute, but he did so because he knew what was possible through him, and he knew that Job could choose to be victorious, and God knew what his plans were for this man who loved him so. Yes, we feel just like Herman said, sometimes we feel like Job because the waves keep crashing, we keep losing, we keep um, finding ourselves in a powerless state, it feels. Will we trust God in the middle even when it seems we're surrounded by evil? Let's don't, my friends, get stuck in the I don't deserve this, I don't, they do deserve this. It is not about something being done to us. We live in a fallen world because folks like us made the same kind of decisions that we make, but God has made a way through. May you trust God in the middle of all of the difficulty whenever it comes for you and that you not ask, why me? Instead, God, what next? I trust in you. Oh, I'm so grateful for Job and for the life and whose we are. Let's pray together. Lord, I'm so grateful for a beautiful weather event today. And we pray for those who must be out in it, whether uh, back and forth to work or school or those who are experiencing homelessness and don't have a safe, dry place to be, that your spirit would be upon them and with them. However you might use us, Lord, would you tune our hearts, not only to sing your praise, but to be cognizant of those who are so often pushed away and forgotten by the world. We are grateful that that is never our status with you. We are the apples of your eye. We are treasures to you. And it is because of confidence and hope and the way you've already made for us that you trust us even in the face of evil or hardship. You trust us to lean on you, to use your wisdom, your strength, your courage, to find our way through. For life is not the stuff that we have, not even the relationships that we have here. Our life is from you and you protect us. You've already made a way through for us. May we learn how to trust in you and to be confident in the covenant relationship that we have with you, may we, we, may we be wise, especially in the face of difficulties that would cause us to sour oh, or to take our toys, what's left of them, and run away. Give us courage and help us learn from our brother Job that you love us, you trust in us. Teach us to trust you more deeply today than we did yesterday and greater still, more deeply still tomorrow. We love you so. In the name of Christ, who is love himself, we pray, amen. My friends, thanks again for your patience uh, in me being late. Uh, love you much. I uh, can't wait to see you next week. Have a safe, dry, warm day.